Good evening and welcome to this evening's live session. And this evening we are going to be talking about uh, marketing and we're going to be starting chapter 11 which talks about business processes. So before we do that, let's just remind ourselves of the point that we have got to. We are about to begin the third section of the course. The first section of the course, strategic analysis, remember looked at stakeholder analysis, financial analysis, external analysis and internal analysis and those four things we have to analyse them so we can make some decisions about what we're going to do next. So we have to look outside, inside, stakeholders and financial. That was up to chapter five. Second stage we did, chapter six gave us some options. Chapter seven helped us decide what we were going to do, what strategy we were going to follow. And last week, chapter eight and chapter nine gave us some numbers to help us to make a decision. So that was the end of the second part. Strategic analysis, first part. Strategic choice, second part. The third part, and this is where chapter 10 is going to come in, is going to talk about strategic implementation. Now, imagine that you are the coach, you are the manager of a sports team. Doesn't matter what the sport is. And you have got a big match that you are playing this weekend. And you decide, for whatever reason, that you are not going to do any analysis at all about the team that you're playing. So you know nothing about them whatsoever. You're not going to do any analysis at all about your own team, about who your good players are. You're not going to do anything at all. Are you likely to win that match at the weekend? And I think most people would say no. You're probably unlikely to be successful. You have no idea what your team are good at. You have no idea what your opponents are good at. You didn't do your analysis. You're going to lose. Your strategy is going to fail. Now, on the other hand, what happens if you do all the analysis? You look at your team. You look at the opposing team. You look at what the weather is going to be like. You look at what the pitch is going to be like. And at the end of it, you choose the wrong strategy. You get your team to attack when they should defend or whatever. You just get it wrong your team is still going to lose. In other words, your strategy is still going to fail because you've chosen the wrong thing. You've made the wrong choice. So in the first two parts of the course, chapter two up to five, chapter six up to nine, we might have a strategy that fails because we didn't do the analysis properly or we didn't make the correct choices. So the team's going to lose, strategy's going to fail. The third part of the course, which is chapter 10, 11, 12 and 13, talks about what's called strategic implementation. So now what's happened, we've still got the sports team, we have analysed our team and analysed our opponents, we've made the right choice, we tell the players exactly what to do and the players don't do it. The players don't follow the advice or the players just play badly. In other words, it's not implemented properly. What's going to happen? We're going to lose the match. Our strategy is going to fail. So you have to do all three bits. Analyze, choose, implement. Otherwise, your strategy won't work. Just because you've chosen the right thing to do does not guarantee your success. You still have to implement it properly. Now, that's what chapter 10 11, 12 and 13 are all going to be about. Now, you will probably, in the exam, you will probably get questions on strategic implementation. Just change that pen. On strategic implementation, they normally tend to be question two, three or four. Not always, but normally. And the reason is because in question two, three and four, the choice the strategic choice has already been made. They have done 
Pestle. They've done Five Forces. They've done Value Chain. They've done Mendelo. They've done everything in the analysis. They've done Ansoft. They've done SFA. They've chosen something and it's not working very well because they're not implementing it properly. So you will come along and say, you need to improve this. You need to improve that. Often, in question two, three and four, we don't really know what strategy they're following. We don't know if they're a cost leader. We don't know if they're a product differentiator. We don't know if they're doing market development. It doesn't matter. If they can implement the strategy better, they are more likely to succeed. And that's all that chapter 10, 11, 12 and 13 are about. That's it. Now, to be honest with you, the vast majority of questions in chapter 10, 11, 12 and 13 really come down to just two words. So if in the exam you are not sure what to do, come back and think about these two words, because it's usually about one of them, it may be about both of them. The two words, very straightforward. You have to make sure that your organisation is effective. Effective basically means, as far as we're concerned in P3, it basically means keeping your customers happy. If you have an effective strategy, if you have an effective organisation, you will have happy customers. If you've got an ineffective organisation, your customers will leave, they will go somewhere else, you're going bankrupt. So you have to be effective. Now, one way to be very effective, to keep your customers happy, is to spend lots of money on them, to charge really low prices and spend lots on them. And the trouble is, that's not going to work either. Because the other word we need to bear in mind is that the organisation needs to be efficient. In other words, it needs to reduce... I've deliberately left a big gap in there. We need to reduce costs. What kind of costs? We need to reduce non-value adding costs. You may remember from chapter five, the idea behind a non-value adding cost is one that the customer's not willing to pay for. That does not add any value to me, so I'm not gonna pay that much for it. So if you are ineffective, your customers will leave, you'll go bankrupt. If you are inefficient, you won't make any money. If you're neither, if you're not effective and you're not efficient, you're definitely going bankrupt, just you're going bankrupt fairly quickly. Most of the question two, three and fours in the exam are something to do with improving efficiency or improving effectiveness or both. So as I said a few minutes ago, if you're not sure in the exam what you want you to do, think about what are they doing wrong, what are they doing badly, and what could you do to improve it? And they'll probably be answering the correct question. Yeah, so all we're gonna have in chapter 10, 11, 12, 13 is lots of different ways that we could be more effective and lots of different ways we can be more efficient, that's it. Now, effective, Effective tends to be particularly chapter 10. It's not the only bit that will have it, but it's mainly chapter 10. If you are effective, if you have happy customers, you will increase your revenue and you'll get more profits. If you are more efficient, and this will tend to be particularly chapter 11 and 12, you will reduce your costs and you can see whichever one of those two you do, you make more money. You may remember when we did ANSOF, we talked about market penetration. And I said to you that we would see market penetration again when we got to chapter 10, 11 and 12. Well, here it is. Here we are seeing it again. How can you increase your profits by doing exactly the same thing, the same products, the same customers, be more effective, be more efficient?
Chapter 13 on people is a bit of both. It's a bit of effectiveness and it's a bit of efficiency. It, it comes across both of them. Okay then, so let's have a look first of all tonight at marketing, which is in chapter 10. Now, this is on page, the heading is on page 111. That's what we're looking at now. I'll just write that up here. There we go. And I should point out, as far as marketing is concerned, marketing questions are always the most popular ones on the exam paper.